Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo 2. Uh, there's a schism, a rift starting to develop in the Mega Powers. And today we're going to start to see how that begins to play out. Mount Kamaki Castle was built by Oda Nobunaga in the center of the Nobi Plains, but then promptly abandoned after his successful campaign in Mino. Anticipating a clash with Tokichiro, Tokugawa Ieyasu, has made the abandoned castle his main base and restored the fortifications. In 1584, Tokichiro set off from Osaka Castle leading his army, with Yokai at its core, onwards towards Mino with the aim of annihilating Tokugawa's forces, which stood as the last obstacle between him and his goal of unifying the nation. As armies from both sides gathered in Komaki and Nagakute, the decisive battle was set to get underway. もしや霊石を集め過酷な構成に出ておりますこのさよう。私も全力で後押しさせてもらいます。Thank you, but the arrowproof amulet, not that useful. Kahenagaramo Striking at Takichiro himself. Heed the pocket watch cat's advice and watch out for wherever the smell of gunpowder is coming from. Uh, this is level is another one with the cannon gimmick, uh, where you're going to get shelled if you're out in the open in certain sight lines. And while we work our way through Awari Province... Ooh, did he just dodge that? 
Uh, I watched an hour and a half long documentary about Neo 2, and it wasn't as insightful as I was hoping it would be, but I do have some takeaways from it. Uh, it opens like a French film student project, <laughs> which is a bit of an odd stylistic choice. <laughs> And it stays pretty dry throughout, but I actually appreciate that in a way. Uh, there's this lengthy scene where they're just having Takichiro's voice actor record random lines, uh, get notes from the director, from the voice acting director. Uh, actually, no, both of them are in the room, both uh, the voiceover director and the creative director, both giving him the notes. Uh, and then having him do another take. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, we're gonna shove him right off the edge. <laughs> and it's not very exciting, but it is a cool little glimpse into what voice acting and voice direction is actually like on the day-to-day -day level. Oh, I don't see her do this this often. That floating attack from above. Twice in one fight? Um, I want to be a little bit careful because I was running out of stamina. And she can do quite a bit of damage with her grab, especially that burst counter grab. Uh, that's a little bit wonky to counter. Uh, so for this this documentary, there's also a little bit more of an emotional core to it than I would have expected because it's essentially about the projects that the creative team leads have worked on together up until now at Team Ninja uh, and how they built trust with one another and why that matters for Neo 2 because they were given more freedom and responsibility to do their own things without a lot of overhead uh, micromanagement. Coming up around this bend, if you just look off in the distance on the left, that's the first cannon of the level, so you don't want to take these enemies uh, out in this open field. Also, really handy to snipe the gunman up there before you even run through. So we are going to deal with Takichiro's bootlickers, <laughs> while Hanzo just watches. Ah, it's a cool attack. But we're gonna break his guard. Get a little bit of that going. He has a lot of HP. It's one of uh, Tukichiro's elite guards, I would suppose. Nah, don't help us out, Hattori Hanzo. It's all good. I've got this. And that is another cool thing about this level, especially the first half of it. Eyes. It's a rare opportunity to have a partner with you. Uh, we've partnered up with... Oh god, I can't remember. I'm just gonna call him Sidon. The, uh, the amphibious uh, uh, Kappa half-yokai. Starts with a K. Oh god. Either way, partnered up with him at one point. Partnered up with Mumio for a, uh, a while, a while back. There's something special about the team ups in this level. Let's see, I'm gonna select everything except a couple of things like some hatchets that are gonna be an upgrade and sell it all at once. Oh, yeah, and that gives me a boatload of Amrita, so that should be enough for one or two level ups. Cool. 22 elixirs from that, and our stash is clear. Because we were just about running out of space. Uh, so through that gate is the bridge full of yokai that we spotted from one of the other watchtowers earlier on in the level. And this is just a big old gauntlet. 
start off with these two, and then more and more yokai are going to spawn in over time. And that's one of the core things about Neo that uh, that documentary revealed was how the dynamic in direction shifted from Neo 1 to 2, going from a more defined focus on samurai uh, to Neo 2, which is more like a tour through history and mythology with a much bigger emphasis on the yokai side of things. Oh, shit. It's a split second away from dodging that. It's pretty nice that he ran out of stamina, though. Something might have just clipped his weak point. Uh, this is going to be a little bit annoying if I have to fight them both together. But I think Hanzo is going to distract the Roku Rakubi. And we can deal with the Wheel Monk. Oh! He was too high in the air to, to get clipped by that first attack. Okay, now we'll help Hanzo out. Since he has been downed. Oh, you love your poison. You love your fire. You love your breath attacks. I'm fine with that. Oh yeah, I forgot about the last phase, which actually shifts you into the Dark Realm. Uh, and gives you some other big... I thought that was going to be aimed at me. That would have been good timing, too. This one's... Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. Um, ooh! I got lucky there. I should, I should be dead. But, hey, we take those. So this documentary also uh, touches on this really interesting dilemma with sequels. Uh, it's this Ship of Theseus problem that comes up when you turn a game into a series of games. What can you change and what can't you change? Because if you make enough changes, at what point is it no longer recognizable as what it started out as? So in Neo's case, if it changed drastically enough from a one to two, at what point is it no longer recognizable as a Neo game? Which raises the question, what is Neo's identity? Hell yeah. This is what I mean when I say that this level's approach to having uh, companions with you is a little bit unique because you get more than one at a time. Uh, and at this point, it becomes this super fun Zerg rush where you just rush everything in front of you down. And they throw way more enemies at you at a time, and that just makes it more chaotic and in turn more fun. Yeah, when the alpha of this was first shown, um, they got a lot of strong negative feedback. That... Mm, no, nah, we're good. Uh, that there wasn't enough about the game that was new. And that's when the director said uh, that work on Neo 2 really started. Okay, you're not going to be a problem, especially now that we've run you out of stamina. And now we just have him trapped in the corner. We're just going to bully this poor man. It's nice when you get this much extra uh, firepower on your side. It's like this rare treat. Alrighty, give me my items and we'll be good to go. So down below in this ravine, uh, it's all Dark Realm. And across the bridge here, what has aggroed me? Oh, I didn't realize you were here. I didn't even realize this ledge existed. 
Uh, I think Honda and Hanzo aggroed a sleeping uh, giant skeleton. So I'm going to have to work my way back to them. They should be able to handle that enemy on their own. It might just take them a second. Yeah, no, they, mm, they're they doing pretty well for themselves. They'll catch up. They have to be done with him by now. Nope, they're still fighting. He downed Honda. Or wait, no, it was that Hanzo. I think that's both of them. No, no, it's okay. It's dead now. Damn. Giant Skeleton was putting work in. He was trying to get a promotion. He was trying to get a promotion to Gacha Dokoro. Ah, oh, stop rolling in the corner, my friend. Take that ass whooping. Just hold it. Just take it gracefully. With dignity. Get your ass beat in a respectable manner, sir. Ooh, hello. Uh, so this part of the area is a little bit snaky, a little bit serpentine and confusing. Uh, ooh, hello. Uh, didn't realize that boy was there. Okay, we're good. I got scary for a second. Uh, and then the other thing that makes this area just a little bit confusing is the fog is so dense here that there is essentially no draw distance. And I think with the way the light shines through the volumetric fog, it creates this really ugly bloom. Which is one of my least favorite parts of this level. Yeah! <laughs> That's such a fun yokai ability! Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, the dog. I always forget that dog's there. Oh, hello. So there's a cannon up on that thatched roof, and... It's not too bad. It doesn't fire very frequently, and... It's pretty telegraphed, and you get plenty of room to dodge around, so it's not that big a deal. We can, however, uh, come around back and climb this ladder up to the roof, and just make sure that problem is solved forever. You can come here the opposite way and actually use the cannon to clear out an enemy or two. Uh, but actually using the cannons yourself in this level is typically not all that helpful. Which makes it uh, kind of a weak gimmick for the level. Because normally when you get these cannon levels, you can you can actually do something or affect something about the level. Uh, like tear down some kind of barricade that you would otherwise not be able to destroy. Or something like that. In this case, it's just about avoiding uh, the cannon barrages. So, unfortunately, that's where we part ways with Honda and Hanzo. They stay behind to secure uh, the the route up to uh, the castle. Or uh, rather, to Takichiro's encampment. All right, and we'll finish this stage out next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.